Let's look at a very important topic in C programming language, which is arrays. So before defining it, let's see how it's declared. The data type followed by variable name and the number of items it can hold, that is the size of that array. In this case, it can hold five values. So let us define arrays. An array is a collection of data items. This A of five holds some data items of same data type, in this case, integer. Remember, of same data type accessed using a common name. In this case, variable name is A. Simple. So where do we actually use this array? Assume that there are 100 students inside a classroom. Would you declare 100 variable names to store their maybe roll numbers? 100 variable names to store their ro individual roll numbers. That doesn't make any sense, right? It's a small program, but still it would take a lot of space. So in such cases, we could effectively make use of arrays. In one line, we could declare it, that is data type int, variable name is names of 100, which means variable, that is array variable names could hold 100 values. Very simple and straightforward, right? So there are two types of arrays, by the way, one dimensional array and multi-dimensional array. So these one dimensional arrays are sometimes called lists because it holds list of items or vectors. Inside multi-dimensional array, two-dimensional arrays are popular, which are like tables or matrix, okay? So let's see how it's actually accessed, how it's stored inside the memory and all. So int a of five, that means it holds five values. This array variable a holds five values. Let us initialize it. So this is how we initialize it. So array variable a of five has five, two, six, four, and three, which there are five numbers, integer numbers inside a of five. So it is represented in memory like this in, in separate cells, memory cells. Okay, what are these numbers? 1001, 1005, 1009. These are the addresses where these numbers are stored. Can you, can you spot some similarity between them? There are four bytes difference between each address that is 1001 1005 has four bytes difference 1005 and 1009 has four bytes difference because each individual cell has an integer which holds four bytes of data so corresponding memory address is after four bytes okay so we'll show that so if you want to see the proof for that print the value of a which holds the base address which is 1001 in this case using that base address keep on adding 4 to it and you will get consecutive addresses and if you add star to it you will get its value so how do you access these values individual values a of 2 is 6 a of 3 is 4 a of 4 is 3 like that these so the index starts from 0 0 to 4 means 5 digits so a of 5 holds 5 numbers 0 to 4 so let us write some simple programs and see how it works. So I'll declare an array variable a of five. So by now you know this a of five can hold five numbers. So I'll ask the user to enter these five numbers. I'll write a for loop. So I need to initialize i. So, so the index starts from zero. So zero to i less than five. Less than five means four. So i start from zero and this for loop iterates until i is four, which is i is less than five means until i is four, okay? So we store the values entered by the user inside the address of array variable a, a of zero, a of one, a of two, a of three, a of four, until a of four, okay? So this is address of operator as you already know it. So a of i means i value varies from zero to four. So now let me print the values present inside this array variable, which is a of five. So array elements are, this is printf. I need to remove this address of operator. That's it. Let me compile and execute this program. Well, for, I forgot this semicolon at the end of this printf statement. So that's it, I guess. There is no error inside this for loop and all. I guess that's the error. Everything is 
fine okay let me compile okay it's working so i'll give 5 20 30 0 and 9 so let's see the output 5 20 30 0 and 9 so it's working so another way of initializing this array are so i'll i'll i won't ask the user to enter input the values for this array now i'll directly initialize it so curly braces inside that i'll write some values 1 and 0 let me remove this 1 2 3 4 and 5 values we need to make sure we have entered only 5 values because this array can hold only 5 integer numbers okay so that's that's it now this for loop should iterate from 0 to 4 printing all the values of variable a 3 4 6 1 and 0 and it's working so what if we have a of 5 and we entered initi initialized 6 integer numbers it throws an error obviously because it can't hold excess data okay we have an error message here excess elements in array initializer that's the error it won't allow us to compile further the compiler stops at this point to solve this we could remove this uh, size information from here and the compiler will dynamically allocate the number of elements that array can hold based on the initialized values now it's printing everything so we need to fix this one I, we could automate that too we'll see that later on so if you only initialize two values for a of 5 all the other uh, other uh, spots will be filled with zeros so another way of initializing the values is a of 0 that is first place inside this array we can initialize like this and one more thing uh, let me make this a of 3 itself 1 2 3 and let me output the value first i is equal to 0 i less than 3 so 0 to 2 is 3 0 1 and 2 3 elements so let me print the values present inside a of i so we need to declare i here so let me compile and run this program so it should print 2 5 and 8 so if we we can override these now values i could give some other number here 1 so 2 5 and 1 will be printed so the value at a of 2 will be overwritten by the value 1 so 2 5 and 1 will be output similar to the regular variables we could assign value of a to 5 after that we could assign it to 6 and 6 will be printed when we output the value of it so let us check for uh, 2 1 0 9 and 5 so let's print out whatever is present inside the variable 5 as I told you before, the variable 5 will have base address, which is the address of this first a of 0 where 2 is present. So let us check the output first. So it should output a address, memory address. So this is it. So for more clarity, let me remove this. Let me print out one more thing that is address of so a of 0 has 2 right a of 0 let me show that to you so a of a of 0 has 2 so what does if we if we append it by ampersand which means address of operator so both these printf statements should print the same address because a has base address and address of a of 0 is also the base, base address so that proves a the variable a has the base address so let me add asterisk for a which should print the value present at that at that address which is 2 
that again proves that A has the base address. Now let's output the uh, address of second element here that is A of 0 is to A of 1 is 1 here. So let us output the address of the second position which is present inside A of 1. So it should have 4 bytes difference between them. So let us check that. So observe the last two digits 16 and 20. 16 plus 4 is 20. So since this is this array is of type integer each cell occupies 4 bytes. So corresponding address will be an increment of 4 bytes. Okay. So let us see character array. Character array is nothing but string but I'll have a dedicated video tutorial based on that. Now let's have a brief explanation about this. I'll write M I B I B M. So let me remove these things or else I'll print C H. C H of 0, C H of 1. So that first, since we have percentage D as format specifier, it would print ASCII values. I have missed this semicolon, I guess. Yeah. So ASCII value of I will be printed, I guess, since we have percentage D here. So ASCII value of I is printed. Also look at the address here, the last two digits, 33 and 34, because character type data occupies one byte. So it has a difference of one byte, one byte, by the way. So let me make this C, so it would print I, the character itself and not its ASCII value and it's working. So what else I could print? Oh, we, we, we can't assign a mixed type data here, if it's character type uh, array we need to have only character data inside it okay so that's very important so I'll input a couple of characters a p p l e apple uh, at the end of this a p p l e after e a strange thing would get printed let me show that to you I'll show that one thing and wind up this video because we could go on and on about arrays. So I'll break this here and continue with uh, upcoming video tutorials. Okay. So what does that print? The base value, the base address, that is the address of A, but since we have percentage C, it would print the value character, which would be odd so I'll print star here that would print a here okay the value present at that address so that's right now let me have percentage s which means string this whole string should get printed with an odd character at the end in this case it's printing ampersand at the end let me fix that so we need to let the compiler know that it's the end of the string by introducing slash zero. Now clearly it prints apple. So whenever you are not mentioning the size of this string, we need to explicitly mention the end of that string by introducing slash zero character at the end. So that's it for now. There are many, many things to talk about arrays, but for now, this is it. Please visit the link present in the description section of this YouTube video for source code notes and discussion about this topic. Whatever we have covered today, all the topics are covered on our blog too, uh, with notes, with code, with output, etc. So please do not forget to visit the link present in the description section of this YouTube video. And please stay subscribed to our YouTube channel and blog. Share this video with your friends on WhatsApp, Telegram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, etc. And please do not forget to like this video on YouTube. Thank you.